Cool. Sorry, guys. Apologies for that. Recording has started. Um, yeah, so like I said, I've been at GreatSoft, been um, on-site consultant, um, quite a familiar face for some guys. For the new guys that don't know me, there's a nice little snapshot of me. Um, you know, um, I'm passionate about data. I absolutely love data. I think it's, you know, what runs our lives these days. So, you know, the, the more accurate we can get data, the more the more data we have. We all know we, we get mined data all over the place. So, um, yeah, it's definitely something good to be aware about. And in my spare time, I like making and breaking things. So I do a lot of tinkering and, and fiddling in my spare time. Um, love to keep up with the latest news, latest tech, latest things on the go. So uh, yes, that keeps me pretty much busy 24-7, eh? Cool. Um, all right, so um, before we start, uh, we will, like I mentioned, we will be recording this webinar. We will be sharing it. It will go up on our YouTube channel as well. So for the guys that couldn't join for technical reasons or, you know, meetings, urgent fires that you've got to put out, you know, the usual um, business. Um, yeah, we will be sharing this with, with everyone. And like I say, it will be up on our YouTube channel. There is just the other webinars there. So if anyone else has missed any webinars, you are welcome to go through YouTube and browse the previous webinars as well. Uh, we will be holding a Q&A session at the end. So during, during the, the demo, you are welcome to post questions in the, the Q&A section. Um, Sheldon and um, Lee has joined me as panelists. They will also be able to um, answer any questions that are on the go while we're talking. Um, if, if it's um, you know, stuff that I can answer, we'll answer that in the Q&A session at the end. Um, and if not, you're always welcome to reach out to us, um, either myself, either your product manager, or info at GradeSoft um, for any other questions. All right, so yeah, GradeSoft Planner. Um, we're quite pleased. Um, it's it's actually been in the market for just on a year now. I think we 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 kind of reached the year date. Not everyone would have seen it a year ago. We did sort of run it internally and we you know gave it out to a couple of clients here and there just to test the waters. Um, and then yeah, then uh, we actively started developing it further. And that's really what I want to go through today as well is the, the additional changes we've obviously made to Planner. Some of you guys might have seen it in its early stages. Um, it might be quite interesting now to see it again and how it's evolved. And, um, you know, we've obviously got much bigger plans taking it further. Uh, so we will be um, finding that information out from you guys as well at the end. But um, yeah, for now, it allows you as a web-based system to plan your staff and your budgets for your projects as well. Um, it does allow multiple boards and allows you different, um, we call them boards, guys use workspaces interchangeably. Um, they basically just areas for you to, to manage um, sort of your projects or anything else you would like to manage within uh, Planner. So it does integrate directly within the GradeSoft ecosystem. Uh, you know, things like the timesheets, the clients, the employees, the rates, everything like that does um, pull in from, from your existing GradeSoft CRM. Uh, if you are a new client, uh, you know, obviously the CRM site only will be set up, but Planner will just be activated and you can carry on and use the existing um, information that's already in your GradeSoft database. Cool, there is reminders and alerts. We've got quite a couple of email reminders that do go out. Uh, there's a few reports, a few dashboards here and there that we will cover. And um, yeah, the idea as well is to make the collaboration as easy as possible and, you know, the access to information and, and the data, you know. Um, so. Yeah, we've tried to encompass all of that into Planner and yeah, it has evolved um, and there's still good things coming. So I think after all of that, um, I like to do things hands-on. So a lot of my presentation is going to be a demo. Um, so yeah, we're going to cut straight into the demo now and um, yeah, let's, let's go with it. Uh, let me end my slideshow here. Cool. So I'm using our great demo site. Anyone that has had contact with your account managers, you'll know the demo site. Um, I'm currently within the great dashboard. Uh, we have recently added the planner module. It's got its own, um, its own pretty icon for us for planner. So we do have a link to get to planner from our modules as well as our menu. Uh, there we go. We've got this is the planner menu uh, here. Cool, so off to the planner dashboard. Um, I have pre-set up a webinar planner board for us. Um, it's not going to be too much of a training session, this. I really want to go over the key benefits of planner. 
I want to really explain how this, you know, can can benefit the business and sort of give you guys a couple of use cases how you can use this because that is also something quite interesting with Planner. Um, it, it's got pros and cons. Um, it is open to interpretation, so you guys can actually use it in in different means. So it does cater for things as simple as tracking secretarial information, tracking tax. Uh, you can use it for big projects, audit projects. We use it for consulting projects internally, for running our, our um, implementation projects. So it has got a lot of use cases, which, which means that's a big pro. However, it does mean sometimes for the new guys, uh, when you do join Planner, it does give you kind of like a, a, a scare on, on where to start. Um, our consultants are very, very queued up. They're very handy. They, they really do handhold you guys and get you off the ground with Planner. So if, if things are unclear and you would like to go with Planner, like I said, give us a shout. We'll, we'll get somebody um, to sit in and guide you through the, the whole process. All right. So for today, um, I've created this board over here. So these are our boards. And um, actually, before we jump into this, I forget I had a poll. Um, so before I go through the whole demo, we have got a light theme and we have got a dark theme. So I'm just going to give you guys a poll. Um, while we wait for everyone to vote what they would prefer the, the webinar to go through, um, I'm actually very interested because this is a quite an interesting topic. You know, do guys like light or do guys like dark? And yeah, we'll see quickly from the poll. Um, yeah, it is what I suspected. It must be different generations. So light mode is winning, um, which is quite ironic because um, I love dark mode. So. <laughs> Let's give this guy a little while. Got 71% of the votes in. Awesome. I think we'll call it there. Three quarters of the votes are in, and we're going to go with light mode. Okay. So if you guys vote dark mode, when you use Planner, you're more than welcome to come into your settings and say dark mode. For our Planner webinar today, we're going to be running in light mode. Um, but like I said, it is a user preference. It does remember your preference. So um, yeah, it's, it's how you would like to use Planner. Thank you guys for that. Awesome. Okay, let's let's dive into things. So as I was explaining, we've got the boards up here in the top left. Um, you can create new boards. I'm not going to go extensively through. Like I said, I'm not going to do a full-on training session here today. But we do have a webinar board. If I just go into the board, I've only got access at the moment for myself. You can invite your other teammates uh, in your firm, and they then can also come in and collaborate, as well as have guest access to your boards. So if you would just like to see them, what's what's on the go, but you don't really want them to come in and, and update anything, you can give guys uh, guest access over here, as well as you can then allow collaborator and contributor access. Um, so collaborator, full access, contributor, they can really come in, uh, manage your status, uh, add documentation, um, chats on the, the the jobs on the go, things like that. <clears throat> so yeah, that's the security levels. <clears throat> Apologies. The projects currently on a board, and if you need to shift them to any other boards, you can move projects from boards to boards. Um, it is very handy. Uh, some some things actually do start on a board and they do progress to a different board, um, and you can then actually move projects there. And then you can really customize this to your own needs. Um, we do have a whole bunch of project statuses as well as project types. And then we've got job statuses. And all of these are color driven as well as customized to your own status. So this is where, where I say things get a little bit um, overwhelming. Um, but generally, start off small, get things going, get a good feel of how things are working. And then believe me, you'll deep dive into this towards the end. Um, so, yeah, over here, we've got nice, pretty date pickers. So it's very visual see what colors you would like to pick, different statuses, those kind of things. And um, you'll see I've set up a couple for, for our demo today. And um, I've got a couple of red, yellows, and, and teal colors. Um, I think they work quite nicely. But again, uh, this is up to your branding, your board, um, you know, your preferences. OK, so that's our board setup. And um, as you can see, we can have multiple boards within the firm. Um, Projects are specific to boards. However, employees are generic across all boards. So, um, so you can plan employees at the moment without them belonging to a board. Um, you know, in that scenario, it might be a um, an audit planner that needs to plan for the whole firm, but.
but they possibly don't want their staff coming in and actually playing around with the plans. They want to keep it very specific. So in that case, you don't have to give your staff all access to it. Uh, you can still restrict offer, uh, access to just administrators and possibly managers, um, and then they can come in and, and um, you know, manage the plans. But in that scenario, the users might not be able to, to actually come in and see the information. All right. Cool. The main view that really we work in is what we call the list view. It is your default view as well. You can choose your views that you would like, um, that you also prefer. So really administrator roles, and, and I'm not going to only put this to administrators, but most of the working generally happens under the list view. We'll go over the remaining views in a moment, but there are things like the board view or the Kanban view that, that other softwares use. So board views are, are really uh, more tailored towards the guys that are using the projects and you know actively participating in the jobs. And if that is the case, again, you can come to your settings here and you can set this as your default board. Um, uh, sorry, as my default view. So the board is, is my board I'm working on today. The default view is this view. So the next time I load up Planner, I will immediately come to here and I'll be able to uh, manage my jobs on the go. All right, so one step back to this view. I've already started with a bit of information. Um, again, this is open to, to you know, your guys kind of feels. It, it also varies from board to board what, what you're tracking. So I've done an example of things like monthly bookkeeping. So we might be doing like payrolls and bat returns and, and those kind of jobs. So I've added in a couple of examples here uh, to monthly bookkeeping. We might have things like yearly work that we would like to track. So there might be tax submissions, there might be management reports, anything like that that might happen on a yearly basis. And then I've had another example for a project kind of work. And we'll be going through this in a bit more detail, but project kind of related work, um, one of the new features that, that we're very proud to announce at the moment is our sub jobs. So this allows us to basically tell things and manage um, our jobs a lot easier, especially when, when dates shift and things move around as, as things happen in the real world, um, you, you can manage rather uh, what we're going to call as, as a parent, you can manage the parent and all the sub jobs um, will then sort of follow through with, with the parent card. All right, so we'll break that down into, into more detail as we go through this. So for now, I'm going to use monthly bookkeeping. Um, the whole um, vision of Planner was to make things quick and easy. Um, as I mentioned, oh no, I didn't mention this, but everyone knows this. <laughs> um, nobody wants to plan. Planning takes time and it's it's quite a it's quite a boring sort of, you know, continuous process that we need to go through and everyone wants it as quick as possible. Okay, so we, we want the minimum amount of time to get the maximum amount of output and make, you know, everything easier in the end. So for that, we've introduced these ghost rows. Uh, we deem in it um, trademark, just kidding, but um, our ghost rows uh, does allow capturing to be quite elegant and quite quick. And I'll go through in a moment how we go through this. So. Immediately, we've got the client we're working on. So this is the client we would like to create a job for. Um, we can pick ABC auditors. Everyone loves ABC auditors in our demo database. So we're going to be picking on them most probably a lot today. We then have the list of tasks. So guys familiar with Greatsoft, these are your whip tasks, uh, where all your time keeping goes to those kind of things. So these are, are your tasks currently active on the client. And these are the tasks that aren't yet active on the client, but are available to, to allocate to the client. So you can. Uh, pre you know, if you're planning for 2021, uh, you're more than welcome to go add on future tasks and you can start already planning to the, to the future tasks. If it's current, we might be only doing accounting this year, we can select that. All right, the rest for anyone that's used um, timesheets within Gradesoft, um, it follows the same approach as our timesheets. You've got your category of activities and then you've got your actual activities. So um, they, they will kind of uh, back talk to each other. So you'll see if I choose financials, it will immediately fill in that this is a core um, activity type. The vice versa is now that I've um, chosen core activities, I will only be seeing the current list of core activities. Same thing with the employees. You can either pick a category of employees or you can just go straight through and actually pick your employee that you're going to assign this job to. Um, you've also then got the start date and the due date. Let's just uh, let's just make this for Friday the 30th of April. Okay, you'll see um, now that I picked the 30th, that's the start date. The due date is only anything after the 30th of April. Um, the start date as well can only be anything from your project date. Okay, 
So you'll find great, um, Gradesoft hasn't implemented um, a lot of restrictions on this planning data. Um, you know, it's, it's a catch-22, too many rules, um, not enough use, you know, you get blocked at every corner you turn. So we haven't got many rules in at the moment. Um, there's only logical rules to stop you kind of like breaking things, you know, obviously, like having crazy things that you start last week and you end next week, you know, silly things like that. So there's a couple of rules around that. Um, but yes, um, we don't enforce you to pick every single value. Uh, we don't enforce you to, you know, use, if you want to use two years, five years, 10 years as your dates, you, you're welcome to do those kind of things. All right. So we've got a couple of restrictions. In this case, dates must be within the project dates. And obviously, two dates must be after the, the start date. So when I select this, it's going to default my hours to six hours. That is Friday. So in this database specifically, Fridays are, are short days. So they bring in through six hours. It is the new feature as well we've introduced in our latest update. So this version is 21.2.0. So, um, you know, you, you might want to, if you're not up on that version, you might want to get there quickly. Uh, that's, we've added some nice features in there. And that one is uh, these dates. Uh, previously, it was fact eight hours um, every day. We now validating weekends and public holidays, as well as the employee hours as well. So you'll see here, this system has got six hours for Friday. However, if I choose Bradley um, for Friday, you'll notice it changes to eight hours, because specifically I'm set up for eight hours working on a Friday. Okay, so I don't, I don't join the bri and the party at uh, four o'clock on the Friday, so I'm working my eight hours. <laughs> All right, so that's quite um, quite nice now. So it is now aware um, of the employee hours as well as weekends and those kind of things. All right, then I can save this guy and you'll notice it got saved. It's put me down um, further down here. Let's try and find the guy who was financials. Um, so we've got the guy here at the bottom that he saved. All right, so the whole idea behind the ghost rows is this is all remembered. So if you want to carry on with any more planning for Bradley, um, if it's to do with the financials for that same client, you're very welcome to just go and say, you know what, in May the 10th, we're also going to be doing, uh, I would have to pick a non-working day. Um, so if I pick May the 11th, we got eight hours there as well. And you can save that as well for Bradley. And there we go. We've got something in the future for the 11th of May. Um, if the employee change, so it's no longer going to be Bradley, you can clear out the employee and you can go ahead and select your new employee. All right, so that's one example. That's the sort of, um, you know, a very quick, we'll go over more capturing in a moment to show you some other scenarios, um, but that is using the ghost rows um, and going ahead and allocating these actual jobs. The other um, sort of idea I want to highlight with, with capturing off these jobs is you can capture just to a level of employee. So a lot of the time, especially future planning, you're not 100% sure which staff is actually going to be doing um, these financials at that time. So you might know it's going to be a manager and we need that manager uh, possibly to do this on, let's, let's pick Wednesday the 28th. Okay, uh, 28, uh, sorry, that's, I want to see May, uh, 26th of May. All right, so let's just say this is going to be two days and we want this for, let's call it 10 hours. Okay, so in this case, I haven't assigned it to an employee. I just said, I know I need a manager. We're going to give it to a manager and we're going to save that guy. All right, the, the benefit about this is time goes on, you know, time comes closer to May. You then can jump into the actual job. So here at the bottom is the guy I've added. We can actually click on it and it will bring us into the job card. You can see everything that I captured previously is all here. The other benefit is my budgeted rates. So I've only been talking about hours. In the background, it's been assigning budgeted rates to all these jobs, all right? And those rates do come from the employee rates if you've selected an employee. And if you've uh, selected a category, we can also set up rates for category. So you might have a very default rate for manager. In this scenario, it's 500 grand. So 10 hours, that's 5,000 budget. Now we come back and we know that uh, we've got the manager that's available and we want an assignment. So you can come here into the job and you can go to your availability map. It will immediately bring up your available managers. You can see uh, we've got a couple of managers available on the 26th to 27th. We also just got a like a week before, a week after, if you want to see you know, availability before and after. Um, 
But in this case, let's let's assign this to Michael. So we select Michael, we assign. Michael's not got a 500 rate, he's got a 950 rate, so it re-updates his rate. If you're not happy with the rates, again, you can override these. So you can go and change the rates if you prefer a different rate for the actual person's rate. Um, we, we do want to bring in multiple rates. Um, I'm feeling like we might get questions about this in the Q&A. Um, it, is, it is on the roadmap, or uh, it's actually targeted to one of our future builds coming up soon, um, where we want to allow custom rates where you can actually pick different rates or input your own rates uh, for your staff. So in this case, it is using the employee rate at 950, and we can save that guy. And now we've got Michael assigned to this work. All right. So quite nice and easy to reassign the guys. Um, like I say, it does allow you for that, that planning um, in the future. Other thing, let's let's switch over to our yearly work um, project and let's go through this one. So as an example, maybe we, we're doing provisional um, taxes. Okay. So we can then go and type in our job name. Um, we might want to pick our client that this is for. So let's pick something different. We'll use mobile services. Uh, let's pick their tax task in this scenario. And in this case, I just want to show you, we, we can actually just say, you know what, these taxes are going to be due, um, they are due year end, and we're going to need uh, 20 hours to, to do the tax. And we can save that. All right. So in this case, we haven't gone through to employee, we haven't gone through to activities, we haven't gone through to all the nitty gritty details, but you can reach an, or already just actually start capturing in the information here. Um, one thing that I, I haven't gone through, um, which, is, which is now quite prevalent um, as we've been seen, um, is where these jobs are landing up inside my project. Okay, so under our settings again, we have got a couple of order by uh, preferences as well as a couple of group by preferences. So um, we look in here, this, this was kind of new towards the end of last year. So it's, it might be new for a couple of guys. Um, from the previous webinar, it, it definitely is new. Um, so we've added these groupings and sortings, again, to customize your experience. And, and these are for you as a user. All right. So here we go. We've got this on grouping on dates. We can remove that grouping. Okay. So if we're not really wanting any grouping, we can just leave it uncategorized. And it's just one long list. Okay. If you want to group it by the employee, so you want to see if you know who is doing the work on this project, you can group it by the employees as well as um, your sortings. So I've got everything sorted by the start date. You might want to um, sort it by the due date. Um, so you know when when are these things due? They all kind of start and end within relevance. So we didn't see too much change with that sorting. Um, the other one that the guys sometimes love is the updated. So what you will notice is updated is anything that I've recently changed. Um, so any, any new guys will appear at the top of the list. This is very handy for when you capture all your jobs to a project. Um, we saw here that the, the jobs actually jumped to the bottom of the project because we were sorting on due date and we were putting them in the future. So naturally they landed at the end. However, if we sort it by updated, um, uh, this is very new tax consulting. Um, and in this case, we just want, um, let's pick Andre. We want him to do some consulting on the 30th. Okay, uh, let's start on the 28th to 24 hours. So now what's quite handy is everything jumps to the top of my list. So as I keep adding more and more and more work, it's at the top of my list. Um, so that's the, the ordering by updates. Very handy when you are capturing large amounts of jobs. Um, and it just gives you that visual cue as, as to what's going in. And then lastly, we've just got, you know, the usual sorting by uh, or ordering by employees, activities, and descriptions. All right. Okay, so yeah, that's got to do with the order bars, the group bars uh, over there. We did a bit of capturing. We've seen we, we don't have to force to capture everything. Uh, one thing I do want to highlight about not forcing to capture everything, again, it's different use cases. I want to go through a little bit later on using the jobs on your timesheets. Um, if we don't have all the information um, captured, we won't automatically be able to use those jobs to populate our timesheets. All right, we will see them on our timesheets, but we won't be able to automatically populate. So, if we've got all the information captured in, in the sense of a client, a task, an activity, and a staff member uh, or employee, then we will be able to use these guys in the jobs. So, I'll get to that in a moment. So, again, everything's a trade off. Um, you know, a lot of guys are just really using this to track the work on the go. What are the guys busy with? 
what have we got planned coming up in the future? In that case, you might not want them on your timesheets. Um, so then, you know, you don't have to go through the whole uh, process of, of capturing all these specifics. However, for the guys that really um, are planning intricately and have got pro uh, project plans in place, you know, and got key dates that you can't miss um, and hours, um, in that scenario, uh, all the information available is, is really helps with the staff to create the timesheets. Okay, so again, um, that is the capturing in a, like a yearly kind of scenario. And then I wanna jump over to my, my little project that I created. All right, so in this scenario, we might be having a project. Um, we, let me just update my sorting on start dates. So this kind of falls in our logical order. We can see we've got planning, we've got a bit of field work, we've got some review and we've got finalized. All right, so in this scenario, again, I've, I've set up just a couple as, as an example. I've given them a couple of dates in May. I haven't assigned it to any staff or anything. Um, but where I want to go through with, with the kind of project fields that, that we can go through, in, in this scenario, I've actually, um, you know what, I, I've kind of realized, I didn't even show you guys how we do a project. Um, so let's let's minimize this guy. Let's start the project from the beginning. So in our menu on the left here, we've got the add project. I kind of skipped way over this guy, you know, had my information available already. So let's add a new project. Um, let's call it uh, my webinar. Um, Okay, and with our projects, when you add these, again, um, the, the users or the owner of this project board can add projects as well as the uh, collaborator um, that or the contributor, no collaborator, sorry, the collaborator can um, come in and add projects as well in you. So let's run this project for May again. So I'm gonna pick May, let's run it for the whole of May. We then got the project status. So we, we're free to set up as many statuses as you want. Um, in this case, I'm going to just leave it as not started. And you've got your type of project. So I've just got a couple of like quarterly, monthly, yearly, but you might want to run um, implementation. You might want to run uh, payroll projects. You might want to run um, any kind of project related types. And these are specific for boards. So this is what the benefit is, is you can, you know, segregate your work to different boards. And then that means you can have multiple different kinds of statuses and types per board. All right, so it gives you a lot of flexibility in that sense. We then have the client that this project will be for. Again, doesn't have to be uh, used, but we're gonna go and uh, let's pick on ABC auditors and we're gonna then put this to, uh, let's do accounting again. Okay. It immediately fills in our project partner, our project manager. You're welcome to override this as well. For this project in the future, it might be a different project partner manager. A new little feature that we added, which is very, very helpful, is we've added the project details. So for this project, you can describe, you know, um, you can say whatever you need to do. Um, you're welcome to go bold, underline, color it. You, you can do um, lists as well if you want to. So, um, you know, you can go through and, and capture your project details as you need. All right, I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. I think we all now to complete uh, sort of details. So that's quite cool. It does give you a nice overview of what the project's gonna be about. All right, and here we land up with our blank project holder. In that scenario, we, we then welcome to go in and, and I, I went with the normal one. We're gonna do preparation or we're gonna have, um, let's use planning, okay? So we're gonna plan this project out. We know we're gonna do the planning in the first week of May. We might be planning for two days, okay? Um, we're then gonna do, Field work, um, and that might run till the end of May. So as you can see, guys, I don't want to spend too much time in capturing. I mean, it's it's quite repetitive at the moment, um, but it's just quite nice to see the different kind of um, levels you can go through and the different kind of um, you know detail that you can capture on here. Again, I'm I'm not choosing employees. I'm not assigning this to anyone, but you obviously can do that if you want to do that along the way. Um, but where I want to go with this is you might want to, you know, break this down into more details. And then this brings us to our sub jobs um, is one of the new features we added. So again, uh, what was making this interesting is um, as your projects grow and the complexity of your projects grow, um, you might want to start splitting things into smaller projects. You might want to split things into different boards. Again, my, my sort of um, advice is to start off small, test the waters, get a feel of how things are working, 
and then and then start going and expanding this outwards. You know, create more boards, invite more staff, um, all those kind of things. You know, as you grow it out. Um, but it's always handy to get a good feel. So in this case, I'm creating a project, but I do want more detail on this. So you know what we need in our planning. So what we can do here on the right, you've got these three ellipses. You've now got the add subject, and when you do that now, you'll get this little uh, drop down here with another ghost row. And from here, you can start planning, um, and you can go. I don't know. You can do discussions, um, whatever you might need to do for planning. But in this case, these guys, you might want to actually say, you know what, Bradley, we we need to have a discussion with you, um, and we want that on the sixth. Okay. All right. Again, only restriction is that it it is after the start date of the parents. Other than that, we don't have any other restrictions on this. So we might just need a two-hour discussion on that. All right, and then um, maybe you also want, uh, we want Adrian as well in this discussion, um, and we also want Blake to join our discussion. Okay, so you're very welcome to go and add. We've got now got three subjobs of this project, and that all falls under planning. It does now mean it's easier to manage, it's more structured, um, and each one of these guys, we'd still treat the same as a physical job in Gradesoft. So these will still be job cards that the guys can book time to. They will still be uh, job cards on the on the uh, Kanban boards to manage with statuses, all those kind of things. Um, the other guy I've been flying over um, is within a job, there's so much more information. So uh, again, I'm really working from the list view. I will move on to the other views in a moment. Um, but if we dive into the discussion topic here, you have got a full um, document sort of uploader as well as a chat. So here I can say, um, please, can we meet in room A, whatever it's going to be. Um, all right. And maybe you want to make this a pretty color. So who knows? Um, cool. So we can go and add and discuss on here. We can add comments. Again, any of your uh, guys with, with uh, contributor access can come in and actually add these, these guys. Uh, you might want to drop an attendance list. Um, you might want to, uh, I don't know what's on my PC, I've got it. Uh, let's go, I've really got nothing to drop in here. Drop the Zoom link, um, actually. Ah, okay, it's not a loud fault. Okay, that's also another good point. Uh, we have sort of put best practices. We are blocking miss, you know, files that, that shouldn't be allowed. In this case, it's an EXE file. You shouldn't really be uploading Zoom EXEs into Gradesoft, but um, if I can find a PDF one day, we'll be able to drop and upload a PDF there. All right, so that's our uploader and our meetings. Um, I really would like to find a document, but I'll, I'll grab one nano on the side and drop it in. All right, let's close that guy. Um, and we will now see we've actually got a little discussion tag on this, as well as if I go into my webinar project, we've also got the discussion as the project as a whole. All right, so any discussions going on on any jobs, any attachments on any jobs will all fall under the project. All right. So here we've again we've got the project dates, everything that we captured in the beginning. Um, but from here, you you also can upload more files um, as well as make comments over here as well. Uh, project has been on Okay. So you can then go and you know add any more kind of uh, comments directly to the project without having to add comments directly to jobs. I think this also came in um, in one of the recent releases towards the end of last year, um, but you can now have very uh, specific comments and uh, uh, attachments just on the project as a whole. I will come back here in a bit more detail because I do want to go through the timesheets first. We do then have um, a couple of graphs and um, sort of figures that we can look at uh, depending on the budgets and the actual values. Uh, again, I'll come back in more detail here, so don't worry. Um, but there's a couple of pretty graphs here that you can see the total jobs on the go. What's, um, I'll, I'll jump to the board now, which has got a bit more information on. Uh, so let's let's grab our monthly board. Um, and if we go here, uh, why are we not seeing anything on the go? Um, cool, so we've got employees. These are the employees on our guy. Um, and here's all our projects on the go for employees, the hours, the budgets, a um, couple of, you know, statuses, what's completed, not completed, outstanding, those kind of things. All right. So that's, like I said, I'll come back here in a bit more detail because I do want to explain the actuals and the budgets and all of that in, in a moment. 
All right. So we've covered a couple of different scenarios. We've covered the whole uh, creating of projects and the discussions on the, the jobs and the use of sub jobs to break down our, um, our uh, information into a bit more detail. The other thing, which which is a little bit, I don't want to say hidden, but it's a it's quite a gem that not everyone has realised. Um, all this time, I've been working just on the whole board. I can go in here and fit it to a single project. If I go through to something like my project and I just select my project on the projects menu, you'll see now I kind of get what we call a split list, okay, a split view, where we actually now have the jobs in the list above as well as a Gantt view um, below. All right. And this now gives us a little bit more visual representation. All right. So the whole time we've been working now, we've been working very much Excel kind of world, you know, if you want to call it that. So we've been capturing the information blindly. Um, but now if we go in and we actually just choose one project itself, um, you see we lose all the other projects, obviously, and we now got um, a bit more information here. So we can then expand this and we can get a good overview of what this project is doing, um, all the hours, uh, when things are starting, due and everything like that. The other benefit about doing it this way is, let's say field work, um, is now going to move out from the 8th to the 10th. You can just go and grab field work. We can go and scroll it. We can drop it. Um, and what will happen is all the sub jobs for the field work will also follow now the parent. Okay. So again, when you are managing multiple jobs um, that do form part of a, sort of a section or something like that, it's, it's very beneficial now to actually add these sub jobs to a parent. Uh, which will mean you no longer have to go and say work A has moved out to the 8th, work B has moved out to the 10th, and, and each individual one go and move out. You can just actually grab the guy, the parent guy, and you can shift him around and everything else will follow. You still, however, can come in here and you can extend um, sort of jobs from this view. Uh, you notice the top keeps updating. So the two are in sync. So if you want to go and add more jobs, uh, in the top row, uh, they will follow through down to our, our GAN view. And if you update anything in the GAN view, if you want to play around a bit with the dates or anything, you're also welcome to go in and play around a bit with the dates there. All right. So that does give us quite a nice um, sort of look and feel um, for, for planning a specific project. Uh, again, you know, we, we're trying to make things as, as visual as possible. Um, so we will, you know, poll you a little bit later for a couple more suggestions as well. Um, on anything to, to make this uh, more streamlined. So yeah, definitely give that guy a go. Uh, definitely does add another whole new aspect to, to the planning world. While we're talking about the Gantt views, um, let me actually go over to the project Gantt. So if I just jump through to the project Gantt here on the menu, um, the same view like we saw now with the single projects, we've got that same view now with multiple projects. Here's my little webinar project I was setting up, and here's my project that I set up. The other thing is you can also move the whole project. So again, if the project goes from May to June, you're very welcome to go and drag it from May to June. All right, so we've shifted the whole project out a complete month down. Um, you will notice I have been zooming in and out. So uh, there, there's a you know a very close zoom where you've got the weeks and the days. You've got a kind of like a month zoom, and then we've got a whole year zoom. Um, on the year zoom, you will notice it's in read only. We don't have the information available to snap these two days. So unfortunately, you can't interact with the board on a, on a year view. However, this is generally just to come in and actually see what is on the go. So if you want to minimize your projects, you can kind of see where your projects are lying. Um, if you want to go into more detail, you can then expand that again with your sub uh, parents and your sub jobs as well. Okay. All right, so I think I've done enough capturing. I now want to go through working with the data. Okay, so we've set up all our boards. <clears throat> we've captured all our projects. We've got a couple of things going. Um, I want to now cover a little bit of the filters and then how the staff can, can use this information. Because I think that is, <clears throat> that is one of the questions that comes up time and time again, is now I've got all the information. How do my staff actually use this? <clears throat> so, um, for us, I think the, the biggest one is most probably going to be the board view. So if I jump over to board view, I've got everything that I've, all my jobs are in these little job cards. Okay. And you'll see that in the lanes for the different statuses that they're currently in. Um, but now here comes the big benefits of those groupings that we've now recently added is if you go and group this by employee, immediately you can see per employee, 
um, sort of what work they have on the go, what's been in review. This guy's got a blocker. There's something that's not allowing him to carry on. Um, again, all the kind of statuses per board. Again, uh, you can customize this uh, for the different boards for different kind of work that might follow, you know, different kind of processes. Um, in that scenario, you might have your different lanes. Um, and then from here, you can actually say, you know what, my webinar, we, we actually in progress this. I can just drag this across to, to in progress. And now my webinar is in progress. You can also come in here and say, you know what, um, let me click on my webinar. You can actually say, um, starting, uh, oops. Well, okay. No one has fallen. Okay. Uh, Cool, awesome. So we can now discuss our webinar, we can go through it, we can add comments, we can add our documents, um, all those kind of good things. All right. Nice, so that gives us quite a good look and feel um, from our boards um, and you can now manage this. So the other thing that comes out um, on these boards is filtering. So we've got a whole array of filtering and um, I don't think anyone, well, I hope everyone's found their, their uses for it that have started working with Planner. So these uh, filters are, are pretty darn amazing. Um, you, you build them up, they are personal to you. Anyone that's used our reports, um, you, um, it's kind of a, bit, a bugbear of ours, you know, having saved filters and reports at the moment. But with Planner, your filters are saved for you. So if you come in um, and you say, I wanna see my jobs, I can go choose Bradley. Okay, cool. Here's Bradley's work. Now I've got Bradley's jobs on the go on my different status. Um, you know, there's no point in me grouping this by Bradley because I know I'm Bradley, so there's no reason for that. So let me go and change the grouping and I'll maybe want to group this by activities. Okay, so I see here's all my financials, here's my management, here's my status returns and everything that hasn't been categorized. In other words, we don't, we don't actually have any expertise assigned. We can also then go through and maybe sort this by or group it by dates. So we can see all my overdue guys. We can see what I should be doing today. Okay, so cool. This this is in the go. I'm busy with that today. Uh, next week, okay, cool. Uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, maybe we need to review this guy. This that return, so we can put that guy in review. And you can go through and work with your jobs. Okay, so it gives you a very nice card view um, of all your jobs on the go. And that's just at the moment uh, a full for, for Bradley. However, um, I just want to see my tax work. So I can come here to service lines and I can add on tax quickly. Cool, so here's my tax submissions, here's my yearly work, uh, all my different tax submissions. And you can go and build up these things. You can also go and add on multiple. So if I want to see my tax work and my accounting work, I've got Bradley's tax and accounting. And the big benefit about this is if I leave here and I, maybe I want to go look up a client or something, I, I, I go away from here, um, whatever else I want in Gradesoft, and then I come back to the planner. All right, so as I mentioned, those filters are my filters. So here I've got Bradley's filters. I unfortunately didn't set my board to default to, to my, Gantt, um, to my uh, Kanban view. However, if I come back here, I've still got my remaining filters. All right, the other big... Um, Sort of benefit I believe is under the filters under dates. Um, you can either pick dates if you only want to see things for next month. So maybe you only want to plan out May or something like that. You can go and choose your from and your two dates. Um, however, we've also got these what we call in relative dates at the bottom here. So if we want to see only everything in the upcoming week, okay. So you'll see now it's everything due today and in the next week. Now the benefit about using um, these what we call in relative dates is it's kind of hard to demo this, but if I come in next week, my dates are immediately for the next week. You, you don't have to remember to keep updating them. Um, so your work continuously follows you as time goes on. Um, however, you know, you will be missing the overdue jobs, so you might still want to check what's overdue and those kind of things, um, which are quite a nice benefit to actually have the board sort of follow you around week by week, um, to only know what you should be doing this week or in that, the, the upcoming week. So you can obviously drop off these filters. Um, and again, you can also go through and just add something up. You know, I only want to see everything. Uh, I'm not care about the overdue stuff. So I'm just going to filter on everything from today um, into the future. All right. So you can make use of the filters that are saved. Um, if you want to get back to normal, you can just hit your clear filters and we back to where we began. All right. So again, different users might have different scenarios. 
um, you know, a manager or partner might want to come in here and just say, you know what, for, for Bradley as the partner, I don't think I'm the partner on much in this at the moment, but if I add myself as the partner, I can see all the jobs as, as a partner. You've also got some other views. Again, a partner might not use the, this view. I, I still think it's brilliant, so uh, they, they most probably would. But we do have other things where you can go to grid jobs. It just really gives you that same kind of feel, a little bit more detail um, on the information. Um, I'm just going to drop my filter just so we've got more to look at. Um, but here it's just the same groupings, the same filterings, everything else all applies there. All right. And then um, I'm saving the best for last. Um, the Gantt by employees, we've put a lot of work into Gantt by employees. Um, we still want to work on a much more interactive employee kind of view. Um, but however, at the moment, for manager employees, we've done a lot of work around this view. So for the guys that have seen the early stages of Planner, um, definitely, definitely check out employee view again. Um, we've, um, I, yeah, I don't want to hype on everything, but we, we've really made it faster. Um, we've made it more intuitive. Uh, it used to kind of give you a bit too much information. We've now kind of related it to, to what we need to know. Okay, so under Gantt by employees, we can come here, we can say, let's view the whole month of April. So I can choose April as my dates and apply that. And now we've got the whole month of April, April and all the guys that have got plans for April. All right, so from here, we can actually go in and see what Adrian's busy with. Uh, if we want to go see in what Bradley's busy with, uh, we can expand that. And we've got all the jobs then for April across our board here. Again, you can zoom out uh, if you need to, zoom in if you need to. Uh, if you go out too far, to, to, well, in this case, we don't have a whole year. But if you wanted to, you could pretty much go through and, and add on a whole year here. Um, but in this scenario, I've just chosen for those dates. Uh, you can also go and say, you know, let's check up on all our managers. Where are our managers busy? Okay, so we could go check up on our managers. Uh, you have got a couple of filters here. Again, with departments and offices, you can do some filtering here. Okay. So that's the first guy is to actually see uh, for all the stuff what's on the go. The filter here as well, you can search just to say uh, Brad, um, and it will go and search just for Bradley. So you can search for just a single employee. Uh, previously, there was a couple of restrictions, and it maybe didn't always get you the employee you were looking for. Um, so we've kind of addressed that as well. But also, now we've got a whole project or planner board here for employees. Um, the next step is to see availability. All right. So at the moment, we're only looking at planned. We can overlay the availability. Uh, you will notice it gets a lot more now because it is bringing through everyone that's available. So I'm just going to drop this down just to show administrators for now, just to, to make it a bit more relatable for what we're working with. But now we've overlaid the planned and the available. So the available gives us our little green markers and the plan gives us all our colorful markers. So here for Bradley, um, we can actually now see uh, the week of the 12th to the 16th, Bradley's actually got some availability here. Um, however, the 19th, 23rd, further on, he's, he's busy. And again, on the 29th, he's got a day free on the 29th. All right. So we've added these little uh, green markers. Uh, you can combine it with the plans. If you're not cared about what is planned, you can just show availability. So if you just want to go and say, you know, which, which of my managers are available, uh, you will then be able to get an available list uh, of just managers here. And again, you can go and search by, if you want to see for May, you can go ahead for May, um, and this will give you May's availability. We see we've got a lot of availability there for May, um, but you'll see like here for Bradley, we've, we've obviously got a couple of um, gaps that we've, we've added in plans for. All right, so you can toggle these guys on and off. Um, the, the other nice part about this that we've introduced, so where we're sitting in May now, so in May here, we might be able to say here, yeah, this little job for financials, uh, we're not going to do it on the 11th, we're going to do it on the 12th. Okay. So we've now enabled it. You can move your jobs around from the employee view. So if you want to manage Bradley's jobs um, directly from a, a Gantt view, you can now do it from this view. You can also extend it a bit. Um, so we can also um, increase the time. You'll notice it hasn't increased the hours. We're only increasing the time. If you do want to increase the hours, you can click on the job and you can increase the hours, everything like we used to uh, with our normal uh, job view. Okay. All right. Um, there was one more thing I, I wanted to mention on here. Yes. The other thing as well from here, uh, let's go back to where was my field work? Uh, I think we shifted it out to the next one. 
um, which is quite here. It's not show available. Uh, no, what is this one? Cool. Um, all right, the other thing what you can do is directly from here, when you actually open up one of these jobs, uh, we've also added a, a quick link here. So this belongs to the monthly bookkeeping uh, project. You can just click on the link and it will directly take you to uh, the project for uh, monthly bookkeeping here. All right, so when we are looking, sorry, I'm just jumping back again, my apologies. But when we are looking at the employee view, we obviously only seen the jobs that that employee belongs to. We're not seeing all the projects that this belongs to, all right. So this guy might have more, um, more meat behind it. So for now, what we're doing is we're just giving you a link, which will bring you directly to that project. And that will bring you through the whole uh, my webinar project and you can see it in more detail. So in that scenario, we can actually see there's Adrian, Blake and Bradley's on this project. All right, so um, yeah, that's the employee view. Um, like I say, we've, we've done quite a lot nice bit of work for it for now. Um, so that then allows you to do a bit of drag and drop, but a fine tuning of your jobs on the go, a little bit more easier managing uh, of your jobs. All right, then I've been talking about timesheets the whole time. I want to go into that and then we'll show you a little bit about, you know, the information we're going to get back out of this. So um, in terms of the timesheets, um, for those of you that aren't aware, we have got a timer uh, in Gradesoft or a, a, a timesheet widget here at the top. So directly from here, if I actually go through um, and I go to my plans tab, you will see that I've actually now got uh, my little calendar. And as I go through my calendar, I can see my jobs that are due for those days. So if you look at Friday, for instance, or let's, let's maybe go today. So for the 22nd, I should have been working on BDI Trust and Cape uh, Trees. So if I want to book time to BDI Trust, I can quickly press the plus. It will fill in today's dates. It will fill in all the information. It's going to bring through the narration. Um, I can just go and say uh, search ABC on the project. Um, whatever we did, we can put in information there and actually capture our timesheet directly from here. All right. So that is now using the, the planner data. You'll see there's now two hours of the 16 hours that has been planned. So we've immediately got some time there through our widget. Okay. So that is, that is the one way we can book time. The other way is if we actually go through to our timesheets. So if we go to time and expenses for those guys that are using timesheets, um, I've already opened up this week's timesheet. Um, and if I go into this week's timesheet, we then got BDI Trust and we've got Cape Tree. So you'll see here's my current time that I have captured. There was the two hours I put to today. Um, here's my other planned chargeable time uh, that we've got. Um, just looking at this word chargeable, I realized I didn't explain anything in non-chargeable. You can plan for non-chargeable time as well. Um, I'm not gonna go over that again. You can watch the previous webinar. I did uh, touch on that in a bit of detail with leave and, and um, you know annual leave, sick leave, all those kind of things. Um, you can go and uh, actually put that in planner too. So in this case, we've only got chargeable time. And from here, we can actually go through and we can select Cape Trees. We did work on Monday and we can say yeah, two hours um, and whatever uh, narration we need to put in there. And we can then capture our timesheet directly from here. So this is why I'm saying um, very beneficial to have as much information on plan as possible. However, not the end of the world. If um, if there's not information here, you will still at least see it as an employee. I can still see I should be working on these jobs. Um, however, I just won't be able to use the quick things to put the time directly, but I still can uh, go through and, and fill in my time sheet as per normal. The other thing I want to touch on, which is not specifically planner, but um, it's something you might have seen in the release notes for those uh, guys reading our release notes. Um, we do have calendar style timesheets. If I switch over to my profile, I do want to enable my calendar style timesheets. Uh, so we can turn it on here in my profile. So I'm going to just save that in my profile and I'm going to go back to my timesheets. Um, I'm going to go to that same week again. And this is uh, calendar style. I'm not going to go through this in, in depth detail right now. However, if it does interest you, um, you can turn it on, which probably is already in your system. Um, if you want more information, give us a shout. We, we're more than welcome or more than happy to, to, to help you with that. So. It just brings the calendar into the whole aspect, as well as what I do want to sh uh, show you is 
uh, on the left here, we've got our plan items. So here we can actually see the plan guides that we're working on. And again, from here, we can actually go through and directly capture time uh, from here. The, the one benefit with calendar style uh, timesheet, uh, unfortunately, which we can't do in, in the older timesheets at the moment, is we can actually complete the jobs directly from a timesheet. So if you finished with this job um, and you know you finished with it, you're now just catching up, you put in your work, your time to it, you can immediately actually complete the job here um, and that will fo follow through to, to the actual um, to the planner. Um, and now we've got our timesheets and we've completed our job as well at the same time. All right, so uh, that is quite beneficial um, and is very, very handy to, you know, to make things a bit more streamlined. All right, so back to planner. Once we've captured all those timesheets, we've put in the working time. I just realized I really didn't pick the right projects to put time to. Um, however, we then can come into our projects and those hours um, will then reflect under here. You'll see chargeable, um, our budgeted hours, our budgeted time in terms of, you know, all those, those project budgets we put in, as well as our actual hours then captured. So we actually put it to, uh, I think that was monthly bookkeeping. Um, we should then have our actual hours coming through there. So you've got a, quite a nice couple of group buys. So, you know, if you want to see per staff, you can add a group by per staff. So there we can see Bradley has got 96 hours for a value of 48 grand. And he's actually putting six hours so far. If you want to see the bit more detail behind those seven jobs, you also can go in and put in things like activities. So you can now see Bradley for financials has got two jobs for 16 hours. Uh, there's the two hours on the statutory returns with, which I've now put in on my timesheet. So we've got a nice little um, sort of quick view here. Um, you, we've also got a couple of reporting. I see I'm running out of time. I'm not going to really be able to dive deep into reporting, um, but we do have a couple of reports. We do want a couple more. Um, we don't want to overload the reports. So if there's any reporting needs that we're not covering, um, I know a lot of guys have got very, very nice reporting requirements, you know, things on project progresses, statuses. Uh, we've got one internally for tracking project completion status, things like that. So we are working on bringing those into the software. So uh, yeah, keep an eye out in future releases for some more reports. Um, but currently at the moment, uh, we've got our reporting dashboard. We've got a couple of graphs um, and things like that. And I think there's a budget versus actual reports as well. Um, I don't want to go through it right now. It's just going to take a bit too much time. I see I've really cut my time short here. Um, the other reporting guide that you can use as well is under the grid jobs. There's also grid projects. So you can see all the projects on the go. You can see the amount of jobs. You can see what's, you know, what's in review, what's in the blockers, what's completed, all those kind of, of goodies. Um, all right, so I think that about wraps it up. I think I really cut time on the dot here. Um, I would like, you know, questions from you guys. I'd like, I haven't been monitoring the q and I, I don't even know what's been coming through. I hope Sheldon's been getting to the questions. Um, let me just check myself, see if there's anything that I really did want to highlight. I really wanted to stress the filters, the saving of the filters. I think we got all of those uh, out there. All right, guys, I'm going to call it quits there for, for this webinar. Um, you know, we, we do want to experiment a bit more. Give us some feedback. Tell us what, what did we not, where, where did we miss, you know, the target. Uh, we always take your, your feedback. Uh, we, we love our clients' feedback. You guys have got the best feedback. So please give it to us. Um, I'll go and answer a couple of these questions now. Uh, if there's anything that I have missed, uh, we will go through it. And then, um, yeah, like I say, hit us up on email, send me some email questions. We have got a survey. When you do leave the webinar, we will be running a, a little survey. Um, we're just trying to, we've got many ideas to take planner forward. So everyone's got a lot of ideas. We're just trying to gauge what is the, the critical, um, you know, next projects to start working on. Um, that, that, you know, will make this obviously uh, better for your business. Cool. Thank you, guys. Let's, let's, let me look at the questions. What have we got here? So we, I'm going to just start at the top of the open questions. Um, can we get a notification when messages are sent? Um, cool. Thank you for that. I completely forgot to show that. Um, I'm just going to go uh, from now, and I'm going to just find uh, one that I had previously, uh, where did I put it? So we can definitely set up notifications. 
Um, I was testing last night. Um, and for instance, sorry, my uh, apologies, my email's in dark mode, <laughs> breaking the rules of the webinar here. But um, I did send this, myself this uh, job to myself last night. So I was busy with project boards, my demo board, and I added my job here. Um, and over here, we then got links to take you directly into planner, things like that. So definitely got alerting. Um, we've got alerts for um, obviously when you create jobs and assign guys to jobs. Um, so we definitely send out email notifications for that. And then we've also got a couple of emails around like overdue guys. Uh, we want to experiment with a, a bit of a Google vibe, you know, where you kind of get your week in review and what's happened in the week, things like that, what's been closed, what have the guys been talking about. So uh, we, we have got quite a lot of good, um, you know, sort of uh, ideas for, for alerting. But right now, definitely you can get alerts for jobs that are created. You will get an email alert like this one to tell you that somebody's assigned you a job and your overdue jobs, we definitely got that as well. Um, I know for some of the guys as well, there's even possibly um, email alerts um, for sending out things like idle staff. So who's currently not assigned next week, we can pop out an email uh, to the managers just to let them know that there's some staff sitting idle at the moment. All right, so I hope that uh, answers the question for notifications. Um, one thing I did maybe think um, as well is the notification, it's an email notification. Uh, we also do want to do some work on our little bell notifications. It's not quite ready for the flow of, of Planet just yet. So we do want to rework our alerts in Gradesoft. That is targeted for one of the future builds. So we will almost probably see uh, a lot more pop-up notifications within Gradesoft directly. All right. So next question. Any way the client can be shown on the Gantt instead of tasks? Ah. Okay, so on the Gantt view, um, I'm going to be guessing that was possibly this Gantt view here in that. Um, so I do see at the moment, we're not telling you for what client this relates to. So yes, um, I will take that uh, back. Um, we, we do want to work with a little bit. Um, let me just think where it is now. I think like over here, if we hover, we got these hovers where it shows you planning, start dates, things like that. Um, the, the left bar here, we, we're running a bit out of space, you know, because we're losing a lot of space with the Gantt and that kind of thing. So I'm thinking ideally we might want to bring maybe like a hover. When you hover here, we'll bring to the, 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 the client name in there because, yes, I can see immediately now that you've made that aware. Uh, the only way for now is to physically open the job and we'll be able to see this is for Cape 3. So not ideal, definitely something we, we can make better um, for the for the Gantt view. Uh, like I said, I'm going to guess that was the employee Gantt view because I can see how that would be a bit tricky. All right, fees, that's a nice one. Can fees invoiced in relation be shown on the project board? Okay, so at the moment, no, but I love that. Um, definitely something I'm going to put down um, and it is something we actually do want to work towards. So there is something on our roadmap already for this. And this is why I say we, we want to just get a survey from you guys at the end, uh, just to understand what's what's high priority for, for next. Um, but with fees, what, what, what I've got envisioned in my head at the moment um, is on projects, we actually can run multiple clients and multiple tasks. Um, and what I would love to do is like here, we, we get for each um, client, we, we get in the chargeable time here. I want to then bring through the fees. So we can actually say, you know what, for this client, for this task, we're going to be uh, billing 50,000 Rand. We've got a budget of 40, we're going to be billing 50. And, and then we would like to obviously bring that through to open item billing. We would like to bring that through bulk billing. So in other words, you can go and say, you know, this project's done. We want to bill. We are going to magically have a bill button somewhere. And we would like to then generate billing directly from our, our plans as well. So we have got a lot of ideas in mind for that. Uh, nothing on the go just yet. So uh, again, if, if it is quite a high priority, uh, we, we would like to experiment with, or not experiment, but we do want to implement uh, the billing directly from here. So um, the other guys, if anyone is using open item billing, uh, we would like love to tie that also directly back to the actual plans would be great too. All right, so yeah, unfortunately not, not yet, but what's the space? Planner, we are, uh, we are moving big time on Planner. Um, so yeah. All right, so I think I'm hoping that that is the open questions that I did have. I see there are no more. So um, 
I think we're going to call the, the webinar to an end now. Like I say, please fill in the, the survey. Please give us feedback. And um, yeah, thank you for joining. Um, I did have a last slide. Sorry, apologies. Let me get back to formalities here. Um, I know, whoops. Um, yeah, so we've gone through the questions. Um, yeah, thank you for joining. Um, you know, we've obviously got an info at Greatsoft, and you're also more than welcome to contact me directly. So, guys, really appreciate it. Have a good week further. Um, and yeah, we'll see you soon in the next webinar.